welcome to ZTech Amanek. In this series, uh, we'll be restoring a Macintosh Performa 460 computer. This is equivalent to an LC3 Plus. Uh, the nice thing about this computer is that it was the first computer back in that nine, early 90s era that had a 33 MHz 6803 processor. And uh, this computer is uh, something that my family I was you know got when I was 16 years old. And uh, I was looking to get the fastest computer within reason um, back back at that time. So I opted for a fast processor, a faster processor, but lower, lower you know, sh uh, smaller hard drive. The hard drives I think was only 80 megabytes. So anyway, we'll be starting this series with restoring the peripherals, uh, starting with the keyboard and the mouse, and maybe the microphone. So start slow and, and get into get into it um, from there. And then I have a monitor and obviously the computer itself that I'm gonna um, restore in a, in a future series. And then I have a whole bunch of other peripherals um, you see here, on the, uh, such as a hard drive and a CD-ROM drive and even a modem as well. And uh, we'll try to fix all those up. And you know, one of the things I'm looking forward to is to whitening the plastic. Um, this is something I'm gonna try a new technique that I learned from the 8-bit guy, where I'm gonna use a heated uh, solution of hydrogen peroxide to see if I can whiten up the plastic. The plastic is very yellow in some places, and you know, and and pretty white in some other places. So depending on which area, but um, around here there isn't much. Uh, sun or or heat uh, outside at least and so I'll have to figure this uh, figure this uh, plastic winding situation out uh, indoors in addition to that I'm sure we'll be having to fix the electronics such as replacing capacitors and, and when we get to the monitor it's gonna be probably a little more involved in uh, making sure it works uh, it's a tube monitor so uh, we're gonna we're gonna look at the high voltage section and low voltage sections and, and I'm sure there's gonna be some components that are gonna have to be replaced but we'll see um, we'll see if it's gonna work and, and it's gonna be a fun project uh, let's get started so here's the keyboard the mouse and the microphone and just kind of looking at everything all together you'll see that the yellowing plastic is probably the worst on the keyboard just around this area and the mouse is maybe a little better, and a microphone has basically no yellowing at all. So the first thing I will do is I will take a cloth with or a paper towel with some alcohol and start, you know, wiping off, you know, the keys kind of like that on the top. Now I'll go through every single key. There's some dirt here and everywhere, and that's sort of the first, the first step here. And uh, once I'm done with that, I'll take it apart and we'll kind of take a look inside, uh, you know, for any components that we have to change. And then we'll also get started with the plastic whitening process. And so uh, we'll do that and I'll show you how we'll look. Here's the back as well. Interesting thing about the back is that it's just not that yellow. Um, probably because the keyboard was sitting, you know, facing up and all the UV and sunlight um, kind of hit the front and so that that became more yellow or the back is just different plastic but unlikely I think it's the same plastic that just didn't get as much um, you know sunlight and UV light to make it make it more yellow so here's everything wiped off um, still need to do a little bit of wiping but you know basically the first the first layer of wiping here um, just took off the layer of dust, you know, so the initial layer of dust and dirt. And, um, you know, the mouse is also, I took apart and wiped it as much as I could kind of in this state. And then I took apart just the back, back here and I'll take it apart here pretty soon. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll see you know, just how much of it I can whiten up. Like, see this label here, you know, it has a little yellow ink on the edges, so. Not sure if I can fix that completely, but we'll try. So the next step here is we'll start taking the keys off the keyboard. I have this key removal here, uh, the, but first, you know, make sure to take a picture of the keyboard <laughs> because all these keyboards are a little different. So you're probably not going to find it online exactly how your keyboard looks. So I took a picture here on my keyboard just to make sure I know exactly where each key goes. 
Uh, because what we'll do is we'll take off all the keys, take it apart, and then we'll do the whitening process on the keys. We'll clean it again, we'll clean the side of the keys here to make sure that all the remaining dirt is off. So I'm going to show you how to use this key remover tool. And this is a simple little cheap little thing you can get online to, to help you with removing some of these keys. The idea is that you get it in there to have this go underneath the key like that. And then you pull up. You want to just pull up on the key, kind of shake a little bit, and there it is. And so once I remove the keys, I've also cleaned the sides of the keys. There's some, you know, a little bit of dirt on the side, so I'll go through and clean those as well before we start with the whitening process. Here's the keyboard with all the keys removed. I've got the keys here on the side, all removed. And so I want to show you just how dirty it is inside. And so I'm going to use this blower first to clean that out a little bit and then wipe it with some more alcohol and then just to clean out that dirt. So after undoing these three screws here, the keyboard almost comes apart. There is, you have to unsnap it here. So there's an area here that it just needs to be unsnapped and just kind of comes apart like that. And so there it is. More cleaning to be done as I take it apart. I see some more gunk everywhere. So we'll be going through it again. But, you know, we're getting to, getting to a point where we have the top separated out so we can actually whiten that plastic, which is sort of the yellowest of all. And, uh, you know, we'll look for any electrolytic capacitors inside, capacitors inside. Don't think there will be, but if there are, we're going to change them. And also take the bottom plastic off as well, because that, even though that's pretty white, I'm going to you know, whiten that a bit as well, just to make sure the color is consistent uh, from the front to back. So. All right, so the back should come off here. And I'm just gonna take, take this, and you'll see that there's a shield here. And you know, that's the back there. So we have all the plastic pieces basically separated apart from electronics, and so you can start more, do more cleaning and whitening. Oh, and what do you know? I did find two electrolytic capacitors, these tiny ones here. They're one microfarad each, so they'll they'll have to go. I have to change them. As again, as I said before, anything that's you know 30 plus years old, which this this is, uh, best to just change all electrolytics. It doesn't matter how small or large they are, if the power supply, filtering caps or not. You know, best to just get rid of them. I haven't seen anything else that looks remotely electrolytic. Sometimes they hide in different packages, but these two for sure are, so I'm gonna have to change those. Other than that, there's nothing else to do with the electronics here. You know, of course, honestly, it doesn't work. And I will, we'll try that out once we put everything together. But, um, you know, a little more cleaning and dusting and all that kind of stuff. But other than that, we'll leave the electronics alone for the time being and focus on the plastic. And let's now take, the, take apart the mouse. What I'm trying to do is gather all the small pieces um, needed for whitening because I'm going to put everything in a pot of hydrogen peroxide, a smaller pot, and then do that first and then leave the, the bigger pieces to last. So the keyboard front and back will go in a different bin. So all I have to do is take these four screws out and the mouse comes apart just like that. All right, so here's the mouse fully apart. You have the top plastic, the bottom plastic, and the electronics. Really simple to take the electronics out. They're just three additional screws that you have to undo. But I found that there's actually two electrolytics right there. One's 4.7 microfarads, the other one's one. So they have to be changed as well. And that should be it for the mouse electronics. But now that I got everything separated, I have a little mouse, uh, mouse attachment here, mouse ball holder. I don't know what to call them, I guess that's it. And so I'm going to put all these together with the, with the keys and uh, whiten them at once. Um, and then we'll see how they're going to look. All right, so I put the plastic parts in the bin there and I'm going to heat up the hydrogen peroxide uh, here and I'm going to put three bottles of 
just a standard 3% hydrogen peroxide into this. Okay, here comes the hot hydrogen peroxide. I've been heating this for about 15 minutes, so. Okay, that's in there. Then we'll just arrange some of the plastic in there just to make sure everything is nicely covered. Keyboard keys face down if you can, just make sure they're covered nicely. And here we go. Put the lid on. And also, I'm going to put a layer of fabric on there just to keep it even warmer. Because the idea here is to keep this, you know, really, really warm and make sure the heat does not escape. All right. Let's go forward replacing these two one microfarad capacitors, these two here. I did buy some new ones. They're right here. They are bigger than that, but we should be fine because diameter-wise, we're just about right there. So, you know, we can we can fit the longer capacitor, you know, right there. Not a big deal. Diameter-wise, almost almost as small, maybe a tiny bit bigger, but. Well, we hopefully should be okay here for the keyboard. We'll see about the mouse. The mouse, I think, might be a little bit of a problem there, but we'll, we'll try that next and see if that fits. But So we'll go forward here, removing these and replacing these. Pretty simple. Uh, this is this is a one-sided uh, printed circuit board, so all I gotta do is desolder, desolder the other side here on a sec and uh, mount these capacitors. So I'm using my desoldering gun to just desolder the, the solder joints here. Just melt it a little bit and then So the new capacitors are in, here they are, a little bit obviously bigger as I mentioned than the old ones, just to compare again, and the old ones are that small, even though they're rated exactly the same, so 1 microfarad 50 volts, and the, obviously the new capacitors are 30 years younger, I mean I just bought them now, versus the old one on back, back from the 90s, but the difference is that the new capacitors are rated 5000 hours, at 105 Celsius. So I don't know what the old ones are rated at, but I bet you they are not even close to that rating. And so that means that the new capacitors will definitely outlast the old ones. And you know, if you can actually fit bigger capacitors on a circuit board, you know, I always recommend to do that, right? You know, too many electronic circuits today have the smallest possible components. And what you get for that is, you know, capacitors that don't last or components that don't last because everything is shrunk down to the bare minimum spec, barely meeting the spec, um, you know. So in this case, you know, I want this thing to last as much as possible, so I put in these, you know, larger capacitors. Hopefully everything will fit when I put it together. So fingers crossed on that. All right, so here's the mouse. And these are the two capacitors that need to be changed, these two little tiny ones. And, you know, my capacitors are, you know, definitely bigger. The problem here is that, you know, they're too tall. So, you know, if I put them in like that, then, you know, the mouse button will not be able to press the press this switch here. So this is the click switch. And the mouse button will come down and press that. So if the capacitor sticks out, 
you know, that's not going to work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to li live a little, little longer lead length and just kind of bend it over on the side, one of them, and the other one kind of bend it over that IC over there. So that should be just fine. You know, this is not a RF circuit, so we should be fine with a tiny bit longer lead length on these capacitors. And, you know, in return, we're going to have a nicer, bigger capacitor that will last a lot longer. So I think it's worth the um, effort. The way I'm going to take these off is just the same as before. I'm going to go here and do the use the unsoldering tool to remove the, remove the solder and then, you know, solder some of these caps, the new caps back in. The new capacitors are in. Here they are. Nicely tucked on the side here. And then here's the other one also tucked on top, top of the IC. And, uh, you know, that should be that. You know, we have to see if I can put the whole plastic case on, but everything should be fine. There's plenty of room here and you know, the mouse button will come down here and plenty of clearance to, to um, hit that switch there nicely. So, so hopefully things will work out nice and everything will fit back together. Okay, so we're done with the whitening procedure. Here's how it looks like. And you can tell that the whiteness of this plastic, which was really yellow before, matches the bottom of the, the bottom cover, the in, inside of the bottom cover, which was always white. They never, they never got yellower. And, um, you know, it actually did take about three days of soaking. And I was like, well, I'll leave it in there until it gets as white as I need it to get. And so uh, the first first day, it got about 80% there. So, you know, you can say, well, if it's if it's white enough, you can take it out the first day, it was fine. But I was wanting to leave it in there just a little longer. And the second day, it got a little better. Um, you know, maybe another 10% there. And then I decided to do a little UV lighting on it, uh, a couple hours, just to see if I can speed up the process a little bit. But I'm not actually sure that it helped or not. So, yeah, I'm, I'm going to put the UV light as a optional thing that if you want to do this you know you can try that uh and i left it in there one more day no uv light no nothing and uh that's it and then i washed it off with water and dried it out and here we go so i'm gonna put all this together start assembling the keyboard and hopefully everything will fit back the way it was here's the top keyboard i get it on there nice Okay, now we got the screws on the other side. Make sure everything is tight here. Okay, let's put the keys back in. The first one's going to be the the trickiest one, of course, the first one is the space bar, which has this metal clip that has to be put in correctly into the keyboard. It also has these plastic, uh, you know, holders or clips on the side, which also have to align perfectly with the keyboard. And then it has the button in the middle, of course, has to align with that, which has the yellow rubber stopper there. So first, what I'm going to do is make sure this clip is out like that and make sure the key is the, the thicker side of the key points downwards so we'll try to put that in and it kind of just goes in there there's some plastic holders right on the keyboard for the clip and then the next thing is to line the center so that that center goes in the center button and then i'm going to try to gently push it down and make sure that it, it gets in there and, and goes all the way in so that's all it is, and kind of verify that it's, you know, you can press it easily on all the sides. Okay, well that was the hardest one, and I'll put on the, the rest of the keys, obviously referring back to my picture that I took earlier, uh, making sure that I don't mess up the keyboard layout, of course.
Well, that was tedious to put all the keys back in, but everything looks correct and whitened and clean. So this is the finished keyboard. And uh, I don't know if it works or not. That we're gonna find out once the computer is done and we start testing our components one by one. But it should work. Those two capacitors should not have caused this to not work. Unless, of course, it didn't work to, to start with. So we'll, well, hopefully it's gonna work because I put it back together, but it's fairly easy to take apart if, if, if uh, I find that it doesn't work. So let's now move on to the mouse. Okay, so here's the mouse. Pretty simple to assemble. This is the bottom. So we just put the circuit board and the assembly in there. The cable kind of just pushes in nicely there. And this kind of just fits in, fits in, in there. And there's three screws that you know hold all this stuff in. This uh, this assembly here, and that is it. So, you know, so I'm going to fasten all those and then the top will come on and that should be done. I'm going to press the button, which is great. Those capacitors didn't cause any issue there. So, here we are looking good. And the final step is the ball goes in there and the cover goes on. And there you go. This is a little, it was a little tricky to get it just right to lock on. And there we are. That works. Everything looks good and it's very, very white. <laughs> That's the key there. This actually whitened out very, very nicely. I mean, I haven't. I don't think this was as wide as this when I when I bought the computer, so uh, turned out very nice, the mouse. And finally, we're done. Here's everything hooked together. Keyboard keys uh, in place, mouse put together, plugged in. We got the cables also wiped off. You know, they don't have to be white, and that plastic on a cable doesn't uh, doesn't brown, so doesn't yellow, so it's, it's good. It's just a little alcohol wipe on all the cables. There's still some a little bit of stuff that I see, so I'm gonna uh, wipe that off. But very white, very new. Looks looks just bad, just the same as brand new. Uh, very clean. So the next step is to look at the rest of the components of the computer, and we'll go one by one, and finally we'll see if the whole thing works. Well, we have completed the restoration of the keyboard, mouse, and the microphone. Of course, the microphone was the easiest; it just needed to be wiped. Uh, the keyboard and mouse. As you can see here in the before and after pictures, look significantly better. Um, they look good as new in my in my book. Now, of course, they've already been used and, and so it's not exactly new, but uh, they look, look really, really nice. Uh, so I'm calling this project a success. And so now we're gonna move on in the next video, restoring the monitor and the computer. And then finally, we're gonna see if we can make it all work. And that's another trick is that we're doing a lot of, a lot of restoration Gotta make sure everything works. So I'm expecting some issues and failures that we need to troubleshoot and fix uh, in the future. Thanks for watching. See you next time.